So corals are animals that live in the ocean. Uh, majority of them are tropical species. When people look at a coral, they think of one individual animal. In reality, it's one individual animal that has cloned itself thousands of different times to make that coral colony. Uh, some corals are called stony corals and they build the actual structure of the reef that provide habitat for a variety of, of marine animals. Coral reefs face many threats uh, from pollution, sediment runoff, and other human-induced factors such as coastal development, climate change, and natural coral diseases. The Columbus Aquarium has been involved with coral conservation for many years. Uh, we were founding partners of CCOR, which stands for Sexual Coral Reproductions. The focus of CCOR is the restoration of coral reefs through sexual coral reproduction, which enhances the number of genetically diverse corals onto the reef. Most recently, we've been involved with the AZA Florida Reef Track Rescue Project. The project is a partnership between Florida state and federal agencies and the Association of Zoos and Aquariums representing 20 accredited facilities across the country. The project was started in 2018 to help mitigate the loss of over 20 coral species affected by a disease called the stony coral tissue loss disease that began to wipe out over 20 species of corals along the Florida Reef Track, which stretches 360 miles along the southeast coast of Florida and is the largest barrier reef in the continental U.S. The goal of the Coral Rescue Project is to mitigate the extinction of coral within the reef, as well as create a gene bank for these coral species. To do that, healthy corals were harvested in front of the disease progression and held at AZA facilities with coral husbandry experience. The hope is that once the coral disease has stopped, these corals can be used to help repopulate the reef. The corals here at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium are housed in systems that simulate all the conditions like water quality, temperature, salinity, pH, calcium levels, and even lighting that the corals would naturally experience on a healthy reef. Uh, our lights actually ramp up slowly in the morning and they get full intensity during the midday and then the lights ramp back down in the evening until they finally turn off for the night. In addition to being a rescue project, because these corals haven't been kept in human care long term, and because they're so challenging to study in their natural habitat, we're learning a lot about these corals. One of the things we've learned is that they love to eat. Corals naturally have a symbiotic algae that grows inside of them called zooanthellae. This algae provides the coral energy that they get from the sunlight. But we also found that corals also like to take food from the water column. And these Caribbean corals in particular seem to eat a lot. If you look at a coral structure, it's either one big mouth or lots of small tiny mouths. And these mouths take out food from the water column. Here at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, we feed our corals five days a week. Uh, the food that we provide is blended into a slurry, which consists of different types of plankton. Uh, the reason why we uh, blend it is to make it size appropriate for the, the mouths of the, of, the, of the corals. After the food is blended, we turn off the system filtration and syringe the mixture over the corals. Another interesting observation that we are having with these corals is that they're reproducing. Uh, they're reproducing sexually, and they're also reproducing asexually. Corals reproduce sexually by releasing eggs and sperm into the water column where they create genetically diverse offspring. Corals can also reproduce asexually by fragmentation, which is a piece of the coral that gets broken off, but they also reproduce by a process called budding, creating what's called a gemma, which is a little clone offspring of themselves. While it's long been known that corals reproduce in this way, some of this reproduction hasn't been well studied in, in a lot of these species because it's, it's kind of difficult to do it out in the field. Being able to observe them in these systems have been beneficial. So coral reefs have been called the rainforest of the ocean. Reason for this is they provide habitat for thousands of animals that rely on their corals uh, for food and for structure for them to live within. In addition to the animals that depend on reefs for food and shelter, reefs are also important to humans. They provide a natural barrier that help minimize storm surges and flooding from tropical storms. And they're also important to the tourism and fishing industry. 
providing jobs and millions of dollars in tourism to coastal communities. So for all these reasons, it's important that we do everything we can to save these important animals.